Hi folks. A couple of years ago I was studying the properties of the 8085 microcontroller and specifically its clock sources. Now one of these clock sources can be an external clock that is a, an external signal that you feed into the uh, clock input pin of the 8085 and it serves as a clock source for the, uh, for the system. Now uh, playing with this I, I uh, discovered that I could uh, uh, run the 8085 with the extremely slow clock of, a, of an Arduino's blink sketch. You know the, um, the sketch toggles pin 13 of the Arduino once a second, so we have a uh, low-high um, cycle of two seconds or a clock signal of uh, 0 0.5 hertz. Uh, I re and the 8085 uh, took that with uh, no problem and it worked, so I reported this uh, peculiar finding in some local forum and someone asked me what could possibly be done at such low speeds, so I gave it some thought and I said, well, you know what, if you put a light detector on your roof and you manage to um, create a clock signal from the transition between night and day and day and night, you can probably create a system that will run at the amazingly slow frequency of 0.00001574 Hz, or in layman's terms, once a day, um, that will light, light up an LED every Saturday, which is uh, somewhat useful for certain religions, maybe. So uh, we left and uh, moved on and uh, kind of forgot about it, but you know, it, uh, it was still somewhere in the back of my mind and a few days ago I decided that I really have to build this thing. So there you have it. I called it the, I call this the um, Saturday detector or a Sabbath detector if you will. And before we uh, before I explain what's in it, let's see it in action. So here we are on a beautiful Friday afternoon. Sun is shining but it's about to set and according to the Hebrew calendar this means that Saturday is coming. So let me reach the, um, the switch here and we are in a Saturday. The lights turned on, this means this is Saturday, it looks like an infinite mirror, nice. So uh, let's put it here and uh, turn on the light, it's uh, Saturday morning now. You can see that the light is still on because it is uh, still uh, Saturday. But now, um, the day has passed, time goes on really fast, and um, we're now exiting Saturday and entering a, um, a Sunday. So it turns off. Now, let's do the cycle. Sunday morning. Sunday evening. Monday morning, Monday evening, Tuesday morning, Tuesday evening, Wednesday morning, Wednesday evening, so it's uh, still silent, Thursday morning, Thursday evening, Friday morning, and you know, if you follow this so far, you'll know that the next time I shut down the, I turn off the lights, it will be a Saturday. And there you have it. Our Saturday detector has done it again. So here we are again in full light and the first thing you'll notice about this uh, device is the beautiful case it's in. This I took from a packaging of some uh, wristwatch. Um, Yoda style. Change? You can. Anyway, um, I really like this because it's beautiful and sturdy and the um, I managed to cut the PCB in such a way that uh, the, pr the slight pressure from the walls of this case are enough to hold it in place so there's no glue, no screws, no nothing just f like floats in midair, very nice but um, let's talk about how this, this works and begin with the uh, code for the 8985 that's right here as I explained um, we have a, a clock at this frequency or once a day this gives us uh, exactly seven clock cycles for our uh, main loop so to speak and uh, this is this has to do um, on a certain. Let me just take the the red uh, whatever it's called in English um, marker. Um, we we have to use these uh, seven days or clock cycles to complete the entire uh, cycle of operation of this uh, device. So um, 
we have to use whatever number of cycles it takes to to light up the LED then we have to within a single cycle turn it off because we don't want it to light on uh, Sundays and we need to have um, however many um, cycles it takes at the end of the loop to return to the beginning and whatever is left can be uh, not no operation instructions um, but of course you can't do this you can't do this in uh, C or C++ you can't just write a program and hope it will fit into these um, very tight constraints you have to do this in assembly no I'm no assembly um, master I um, simply read the um, instruction set information in the datasheet of the microcontroller and looked up information and um, studied the uh, the output of the um, the compiler the assembly listing of the compiler for uh, for code that I wrote in C until I uh, managed to to squeeze everything into this, these constraints and um, I got a, a um, main loop that's uh, seven cycles long and does exactly this. Now um, it should be noted that there's some initialization code uh, that runs before the main loop and that's that takes about um, there are about 10 assembly instructions inserted by the compiler and another two of my own and also the um, the startup sequence of, uh, of uh, these microcontrollers uh, has some delay of its own in terms of uh, clock uh, cir uh, cycles so all in all when I power this on, when I turn this on I have to inject some uh, 40 uh, cycles into it before it reaches the main loop and uh, obviously I won't wait a month and a half uh, to, for it to happen naturally but the moment it, go, it gets into the loop everything everything is fine so this uh, if you want to see the code you uh, simply can uh, you can simply visit the link I'll put below to the blog post that I wrote about it the code is there with uh, annotations and the uh, actually the only thing uh, that we need to clarify now is the um, how we create how we get the clock signal from these uh, light dependent resistors and this is kind of tricky so um, let me give you a little background so my initial idea to generate the clock signal was to do something like this I'll have the um, uh, voltage here, system voltage, 3.3 volts then a um, light dependent resistor here that's the symbol apparently then node, the uh, another fixed resistor and the ground now, uh, the node goes into the uh, clock input pin of the 8785 now, um, let's say it's uh, there's a strong light outside this re the resistance of the LDR drops so very little uh, voltage is dropped here so uh, the output will be very close to um, to be high to very close to the uh, system uh, voltage um, and vice versa if this if the environment is uh, dark this will have very high resistance most of the uh, voltage will be dropped on this so this output will be um, low and very close to ground uh, so this is a sort of a clock signal um, if I wanted to, to reverse the polarity of the clock no problem I can just uh, put the LDR here and this fixed resistor here it doesn't matter but um, this won't work because of uh, two issues actually uh, first um, the, uh, the question is where's the midpoint where's the threshold where this, where this changes um, let's say uh, you get to, to twilight and the light is uh, sort of uh, in, in between these two values so what will the uh, output be? will it be high, low, if there's a little cloud passing over, this, over the sun it will immediately uh, drop or, uh, or there's a ray of light coming out of the cloud so it will be high and it will uh, really disrupt the, um, the cycle also it will be sensitive to things like um, full moon um, uh, clouds in a rainy day a bird flying over and dropping its uh, shadow on the LDR so uh, this is not stable enough we need something that has a um, very high threshold 
for uh, declaring a high output and very low threshold for declaring low output. And this is done with um, using a um, little component that's called a um, a push pull output a rail to rail comparator, a very interesting device. I'll give you the uh, cliff notes on this because it's uh, quite complex. If you want to study it uh, seriously, I have some um, links, useful links in my in the blog post that I uh, linked below. But let's see what it does. So here's our push pull comparator in all its glory. It's uh, a bit similar to an operational amplifier, an op amp, but uh, it's even simpler than that because. It has the uh, non-inverting input and the inverting input. If this, if the voltage here is higher than here, then the output here is high. Uh, rail to rail, meaning it will be exactly 3.3 volts. Right? But if this reverses, uh, this is this will be lower than this, then the output will be ground. So let's erase that. And say ground. Now, uh, more than that, the reason it's called a push pull is that uh, it's not just a high impedance uh, sort of uh, reference. This is actual um, uh, a current source or current sink. When it's high, it's a source. It can drive an LED or whatever. And when it's low, it sinks. It, it uh, sinks current. It can draw current. And that is useful because of what we're going to do now. Um, Remember the uh, the voltage divider for the um, let me draw that again. That's V. That's our LDR. Schematically, that's a node and fixed resistor to ground. This is the uh, light detection uh, circuit, and we get it its output to here. And here on the uh, non-inverting input, we have some kind of reference which reference which is also a voltage divider right the exact values don't really matter this is a static um, um, so you set up it uh, it will give you the same results as this alone however what we do here is we take this in output that goes to the clock pin and we fit it back through a resistor to here. And this is where the magic happens. Let me explain. Um, let's say that for some reason our current uh, output is high. This means that this is higher than this. This is uh, currently low, okay? So because this is higher than this, our output is high. Now a high output goes through here and this means that we have uh, V or uh, the system's voltage comes through here and through here this is uh, high impedance, there's no current going through here so it's just like uh, two uh, system voltages come here and go out through here, through this uh, one resistor so schematically we can draw this like that we have two resistors in parallel right? the node and the resistor to ground is V now. Um, because the resistors are in parallel, you know, this uh, means that the uh, combined resistance is lower. This is a small resistance. Um, very little uh, voltage is dropped on here, so the result of this node, which goes to here, is high. Okay, so this is high. Now, um, this means that the threshold now for this is extremely um, distant. This is high, right? This is low. For this to become greater than this, and to switch the output, and this to be greater than this, it has to cross a very high threshold. But let's say it happens, uh, you know, um, very strong light, output here is very high, higher than this, we have a reversal of, uh, of our output, so we'll just change that. This, as we said, becomes extremely high. And now, because it became so high, higher than the uh, inverting, the non-inverting input, 
our output is uh, reversed, it becomes ground, right? And it becomes a, um, a sink. So basically, this uh, whole setup is reversed. It becomes, we have one voltage, right? In here. And a parallel setup of resistors, this one and this one, to ground. And because of this uh, setup, now this is a small value, so most of the voltage is dropped here, and the result of the node is therefore very low. So we have low here. This is lower than this. So um, to, to, for this to become higher than this, we'll have to drive this one very low, again, lower than that. So we have a new threshold, which is much lower. So all in all, if you follow this so far, then you really are doing great, because it took me much, much longer to, to get this straight. But um, all in all, we have a, uh, let's say that's the uh, time, and that's the voltage, and that's our uh, sort of signal. Um, it's time, right? So this goes um, into the, uh, the setup that I showed you. It will only uh, indicate high at a high threshold, right? So the, the uh, output is low, 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 and then come, becomes high. And it will only become low at a very low threshold. So this is like uh, an extremely sunny day don't have yellow sorry this is like uh, night time which is kind of silly because you also see the moon at uh, daytime but never mind that's the that's how it works in drawings and everything in between between here and here the output doesn't change so this is the only terminal here here you can have clouds and birds and other uh, interfering uh, things that won't affect the final outcome of our uh, of our uh, device. Now um, I put uh, two uh, LDRs in parallel here, uh, just to to be sure you know that uh, there's no shadow on one of them that will uh, disturb the, the the final results. So I just put two just in case they uh, work together. Uh, to make sure that the, the actual ambient light is changing, not something uh, particular to, to the point where this uh, sensor is. Um, so this is the, um, uh, the general principle of operation here. Uh, some uh, few more uh, tricks and uh, little things, but uh, I'll save you the trouble. You've uh, listened uh, long enough. So um, this is the device, uh, the slowest practical device I've ever conceived and ever heard of. Heard of. If you can think of something that will um, be fed by a natural source and be even slower and still useful, I'll be happy to hear it about it in the comments. Um, so uh, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.